Welcome back to The Effect. We are still talking about regression discontinuity. And you know it was coming. It's, regression discontinuity is not a free lunch. There are some assumptions that we need to make in order for regression discontinuity to work properly. And if those assumptions are wrong, then the estimate we get from our regression discontinuity will be wrong as well. It seems nice and clean, but in fact, there are some assumptions hiding under the hood. So what are those assumptions? Well, one of the assumptions that we have to make is that, you know, we have this idea that if we focus in narrowly around the bandwidth, that we're basically picking out groups of people that are comparable, except that some got the treatment and some didn't, right? Comparing people who had incomes of $11,900 against people who have incomes of $12,100, that's not a huge difference. Uh, and yet one of them got the treatment and the other one didn't. And so it feels like I should be able to compare them and say, hey, whatever differences there are between you, it's probably because of the treatment. However, what if that is not true? What if those two groups, in fact, look quite different? If that's the case, then that might tell us a couple of things. Let's say, for example, that if you look at the people who just barely get the treatment of this income poverty alleviation thing, uh, people who have incomes from 12,000 from 12, down to 11,900, 20% of them have a college degree. And if you look at people who are just above that cutoff from 12,000 to 12,100, 40% uh, of them have a college degree. Well, that's weird, right? Because we're basically saying that these two groups are comparable, but almost exactly the same, except that one of them got the treatment and the other didn't. And yet their college completion rates are very, very different. Isn't that weird? Which could mean one of two things. It could mean that maybe we were wrong about this, the treatment being the only thing that's different across that cutoff. Maybe there's some other policy that helps you get a college degree uh, if you earn slightly more than $12,000. That would be a problem for us because then we'd be confusing the effect of the income policy we're interested in with the effect of that college policy that we're not interested in. So that's one thing it could imply. It could imply that our whole research design just doesn't make any sense. Uh, it could also just be some bad luck, right? It could be that just by random sampling chance alone, it sort of looks like, you know, uh-oh, well, we were sort of hoping that on average, these two groups would be the same, but we happened to get a sample in which they're not bad luck. Either of those things is not particularly good. So how can we check for that particular problem happening? Well, in this case, it is particularly easy. And in fact, a lot of regression discontinuity tests are going to be like this, where you just sort of run regression discontinuity again. Um, I think that's kind of neat. But what can we do here? In this case, we're going to take all the things that we might consider to be on backdoors, control variables, and we're going to run regression discontinuity again, but using them as the dependent variable. So in the case of the income poverty alleviation program, uh, I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to see whether, you know, the running variable and the treatment predict your college completion rate. I'm going to say, okay, college completion rates might be very smoothly changing as we go along the income uh, income distribution. And then as soon as we hit that uh, that $12,000 cutoff, do they jump? Do the college, does the rate at which you have a college degree jump? If it does, that suggests that well, it's not just the treatment that's jumping at that point, it is also the college completion rate for one reason or another. And you can do this with all of your control variables. Anything that might qualify as a control variable that you wouldn't expect your treatment to affect, you can use. And you should hope that you don't find an effect for any of these things, right? Because the treatment should not be affecting any of these things. It should, you know, the income poverty alleviation thing should not affect whether you get a college degree at least not depending on the timing. Um, and uh, so if it does seem like there's a difference there, then either there's something else that you're missing or you just got a bad luck draw with your sample. Here's an example of this in action. So this is from a paper called Government Transfers and Political Support. And what they looked at uh, was a poverty alleviation thing. Uh, if you earn just below a certain amount, then the government would send you a check. Now, the main outcome of interest here is whether getting that check uh, makes you more supportive of the government. And here is the graph that shows the results for that. Uh, now, in order to qualify for this treatment, uh, you had to be below the income cutoff. Uh, and so you can see that the support for the government does seem to jump quite a bit right at the cutoff right there, which implies that the treatment that getting a check from the government does indeed make you support it more. We can see that just on the right side of the cutoff where people are not treated, uh, we see considerably lower par uh, levels of support, kind of smoothly changing along the income uh, axis. Uh, and then as soon as you get to that dashed line, as soon as you dip below the dashed line, government support jumps immediately, just as you'd expect if the treatment is the thing responsible for increasing your government support. How can you run this uh, placebo test? How can you check whether there might be a problem with comparing those people just below to just above? Well, again, we're going to run regression discontinuity again. We're going to produce this exact same graph, but instead of the actual outcome variable as the dependent variable, we're going to use some controls or covariates if you prefer. In particular, we're gonna use the mean age in the household, how old people are in the household, uh, and also how much education there is in the household, which this, uh, this check that you get from the government shouldn't affect either of those things. So if it did, we'd be in trouble. And in both of these cases, things look pretty good because we do not see a big jump right at the cutoff. 
you look at mean age in the household, it looks like it's smoothly changing over the income distribution uh, with slightly higher uh, ages for slightly higher income households, which makes sense if you're earning more as you get older. But we don't see a big jump at the cutoff. Uh, things are looking pretty much the same to the left and to the right of that cash line. Same thing with mean education in the household. Mean education seems to not really be related all that much at all to income, at least in this particular narrow range. Um, and, but, uh, and also there's no real jump at the cutoff either, right? Things look pretty much the same to the left of the cutoff and to the right. And this is exactly what we want to see, right? If we saw a jump there, that would indicate that there is a difference just to one side or the other, and we don't want to get those two things confused. Now, what would we do at this point if we did find a difference? Well, it would depend on what we thought that difference reflected. If we think that that difference is reflecting something else going on at the same time, so for example, you know, oh, it turns out that uh, the cutoff that we use to determine your income poverty relief also is a cutoff that gives you a college degree or something like that, something weird is going on there, um, or some sort of manipulation that we'll talk about in a second. Well, in that case, you might be really concerned about your research design that just, it doesn't work, right? It simply doesn't work if we can't assume that the people on either side are truly comparable. But what if it's just that you got a bad random draw? You, you're pretty certain that the assumptions that led you to this research design are solid, that the people just above and just below are really, really comparable, uh, but you just got a sample in which it just so happens that people are older on one side of the cutoff or another, something like that. Well, in that case, you can just add a control variable. There's nothing wrong with adding a control variable to your regression discontinuity specification, and it might help even out any sampling differences that you happen to get just on one side of the cutoff or another. So that sort of placebo test uh, is a common thing that you will do, and it's in fact a great way to check the plausibility of your regression discontinuity design. Think of parts of your data where the regression discontinuity effect should not be there and see if they're there. The other kind of assumption that we need to make is that the running variable is basically randomly assigned give or take. What I mean by that is that, I mean, yeah, it's it's related to other stuff. The running variable is not uh, exogenous. It's related to a bunch of backdoor stuff. However, uh, we don't have people trying to manipulate their own running variable uh, in any way. That the running variable is, you know, it is what it is. It comes from whatever it's determined by whatever it's determined, but people are not trying to change their running variable uh, in any particular way. And this can come about in a few different ways. The main thing that we might be really concerned about is manipulation. Uh, so let's say that, you know, you have some sort of income relief program and you know that if you earn less than $12,000 a year, you're going to get a check in the mail. And you know also that you're on track to earn $12,100 this year, which is going to be too much to get your check. So why don't you just um, work a little less on purpose so that you get the check? That would make a lot of sense to do. And so in that case, you're not really randomly assigned to be on one side of the cutoff or another. You chose to be below the cutoff because you knew that's where the treatment was going to be applied and you wanted to get treated, right? Obviously, our regression discontinuity is not gonna work in that scenario. So one good way that we can check for this is look for whether the running variable itself seems to be smoothly distributed at the cutoff. If we look at the running variable and it looks like we don't have anybody just above the cutoff and we have everybody just below where they're getting treated, that sort of implies that there were a lot of people who were just above and sort of mm, nudged their way into being treat on the treated side of things. A very basic way to do this is simply to look at how many people are in each bin of the running variable. We take the running variable, we split it into bins, and we check how many people are there. You might get a graph that looks like this. And what we're hoping to see is that you can't really find where the cutoff is. We certainly don't want it to be the case that we're missing a lot of people just to one side of the cutoff and we find them just on the other side of the cutoff. We want it to be nice and smooth uh, because that indicates that nobody has tried to manipulate their running variable. You sort of want this distribution to be just like it would be if nobody cared about this running variable at all. In this particular case, this graph looks pretty good. Nothing about this suggests to me that anybody is moving themselves from one side of the cutoff to the other. Now, if you see a violation here, if it looks like your running variable has been manipulated, that's a lot harder to deal with. There's not a whole lot that you can do in that circumstance, but uh, you know there are some tricks that you can try that I'm not really gonna go into. And on that note, there are other things that could be going on with your running variable that could get you into trouble. The running variable could be too granular, right? You really want a nice smoothly changing running variable. What if it's only measured in big old chunks? Uh, what if our, for our income poverty relief program, uh, you, I, you know, you're, you're qualify at $12,000, but I don't know exactly how much you make. I just know that you made from $12,000 to $13,000. You're somewhere in there. Maybe that's just what's been reported in the data. Maybe for anonymity reasons, uh, they didn't want to report the exact precision. Well, in that case, that forces me to compare people who earned $13,000 against people who earned $10,000. I don't want to do that. That's too far away to be able to reasonably say that those people are comparable. It's just that one of them happened to end up on one side of the line and one of them ended up on the other. So a granular running variable can be a problem. Another problem can be a heaped running variable, uh, where it looks like some people might round their numbers. So if you're looking at your income data, and some people are reporting 11,932, 11,936, 12,037. Uh, so you get nice, smoothly distributed running variables for them, 
But then some people sort of phone it in and say, I earned $11,000. I earned $12,000. And in that case, you get a few people at the sort of more precise values and a lot of people lumped in at those exact uh, sort of uh, round values, uh, which can be a problem if those are different kinds of people. If sort of the people who decide to round are different kinds of people than the people who decide to report precisely, and that's introducing some backdoors into your analysis as well. For both of those things, granularity and uh, lumping and heaping, uh, you might want to look in the chapter for some more details on what exactly to do there. All right, so that closes us out talking about regression discontinuity, and in fact closes us out on our last main chapter covering uh, sort of a big template research design. I'll talk about a few more in the future videos for methods that are a little bit less popular, um, but that uh, that's all we got to say for regression discontinuity. And there's certainly a lot more detail in the chapter, uh, but for the videos, I'm done with that. All right, thank you very much. Thank you.